Hello, Calvary Visalia family. I'm sure, good morning. I'm sure many of you have known me for my entire life that I have been going to this church or you have met me somewhere along the way, but many of you know my journey and my struggle with addiction and my past. And only through God was I able to overcome that. And so that's why I'm here today working for this church, working with your children, working with your young adults, and just being a part of this ministry and this life that God has given me. And I really couldn't have done it without him. And one of the tools that he used to do that was actually right after I had got out of jail, I had gone into a program called Teen Challenge. It wasn't just for teenagers, though. It was for adults of all ages, right? <laughs> Get that a lot. Um, Teen Challenge was actually founded by a pastor named David Wilkerson, I believe, in New York. And it's a very amazing history if you ever want to look into it. It's an amazing, amazing thing that he did that he started with about five young boys that were being tri on trial for killing someone. And he reached out to them. And then eventually he built a program that would help young people who struggle with addiction, gang life, everything afterwards. There's so much history there. But Teen Challenge is a one-year program for men and women. Men, women, men, women, men are kept at different campuses, and they give you one year. And the best thing about this, though, that I really can't impress anymore, that something that's true to our hearts is that their entire focus of recovery is Jesus. I'm not sure if it's for you guys, but when I was in there, there was no um, drug rehab. There was no talking about you know, like addictions, the past of it and everything, the real healing came through Jesus. The real healing was learning about him and learning about his mercy and learning about his love and learning what it meant to be a Christian, if that's so what we desire to do, and knowing that there is no other path. You can find one, but there will never, ever be that fulfillment that left that empty hole in your heart that you started searching for something to fill it in the first place. Only Jesus. And so with my great excitement, we are introducing the Teen Challenge of Readly. blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Um, I actually went to a Calvary Chapel elementary school in LA when I was a kid. Um, so I know theology pretty well. Um, but as uh, you know, one of the, um, you know, the stories that Jesus told was about the prodigal son. And I could totally relate to that. Right? I was, I was once lost. And now I'm found. Because God's grace and his mercy is so good, so good to me. And so he's so good to these men, so good to us, amen? When sin abounds, grace abounds even more, right? There's nothing that can snatch us out of the Father's hand. His love and his mercies endureth forever. And so Teen Challenge, like she said so beautifully, um, can we give a hand, amen, for what the Lord has done? <laughs> And um, yeah, she already pretty much broke down what Teen Challenge is. Uh, I don't really have to give much more. Um, but yes, it was started by Pastor David Wilkerson. And um, he, he just had something on his heart. I, he, he took away his TV because he felt like it was a distraction. And in turn, he replaced it with fasting and praying. And as we know, that, that's what we do when we, when we fast. We replace it with spiritual, you know, uh, you know, disciplines, right? And so he started to get in some deep prayer with the Lord. And the Lord just started to speak to him. And one day there was a Life magazine with 
a, a drawing of these gang members that are facing a murder charge in New York. Mind you, this pastor, he's from Pennsylvania, like a small town, country, skinny preacher. Like, there's nothing becoming of him, right? But he did not, he was not on power nor by might, but he operated with the spirit of God. So he looked at that Life magazine, and he had compassion for these men. And God's like, you're going to go over there. You're going to go to New York, and you're going to try to do something. So he went to New York, and he goes in the courtroom. And this is a big scene. I mean, this is like the thing that's going on in New York right now. I mean, there's uh, photographers, videographers, news reporters everywhere surrounding the court building, right? And he goes in there, and he tries to stand up and say something, but he's immediately thrown out of the courtroom. And as a, as a spectacle to the world, they took a picture of him holding his Bible up, like, what is this preacher doing, right? They're trying to make him look dumb, right? That's what the enemy tries to do. That's what he tries to do. He tries to make us look dumb. But God takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And when the enemy plays checkers, God plays chess. He's way ahead. He's way, he already knew. But it sparked a fire in his heart. And ever since then, he's like, you know what? I'm going to go to the neighborhoods. I'm going to go to the ghettos. And I'm going to bring the gospel to them, just like Jesus Christ did. I'm going to go to where there's hurting people that need to heal the healing power of Jesus Christ. And so he went to the neighborhoods and he started to preach. But he wasn't received very well. He was thrown out. But just like Paul, he'd go to a city. He'd get beat up. Yeah, thrown out, and then where would he go? He'd go back to that same city. I'm coming back. So that's what he did. And one day, one of the notorious gang leaders, Nicky Cruz, was sick and tired of it. He was tired. He's like, you better get that Jesus out of here. Stop preaching the gospel. Stop coming around here. If you don't, then I'll kill you. Put a switchblade to his throat. And Pastor David Wilker said, Skinny guy, right? Nothing becoming of him. Wasn't like a big macho preacher. He was like, you could, you could cut me up in a million pieces. You could grab every single one of those pieces and throw it on the street. But every single one of those pieces are going to say that Jesus loves you. That's the kind of power that changes people. That's the kind of love that shakes the world, that flips the world upside down. That's why the apostles were able to change the world. There's just 12 of them, but they're able to spread the gospel to where we know it today, amen? They preached it to the world, and it was that unconditional love that sparks that fire in people. And Nikki Cruz expected retaliation, but he got love instead. He did not overcome evil with evil, but he overcame evil with good. He overcame evil with love. And to me, that was the moment where Teen Challenge was birthed. At that very moment, when he didn't retaliate, but he showed him love. And so now we have over a 1,000 teen, teen Challenge Centers worldwide. We have over 200 in the US. And the ones here in Southern California are absolutely free. They don't pay a dime, not a cent. I have friends that have been through programs before that pay $25,000 a month. There's other teen challenge centers because they're not faith-based, because they're not operating on donations alone. They have to kind of press down the amount of Jesus. It's not a requirement in some teen challenge centers. It's actually a, just a suggestion. Just have Jesus once a week class one hour a week but it's not a requirement here these guys how much jesus do you guys get a lot, you can ask him <laughs> you don't have to you know no you don't have to believe my word these guys get jesus breakfast lunch and dinner and like i always like i always say you could take jesus out out of your pocket and you know chew on him throughout the day these guys get jesus all the time we pray it in and what? 
pray it out every time before any meal, before we go anywhere. How many classes do you guys have a week? Every day. Every day. <laughs> Yeah, a, a lot, uh, five days out of the week, right? And they get church services all day, right? I mean, these men know the word now, amen? They come in hurting, they come in broken, they come in needing something more than what this world can offer, what they try to do on their own strength or their own intellect. Because as you know, we can only go so far on our own, Amen. It says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God, in his richness of his mercy and grace, made us alive together in Christ. And that is the only reason why they stand here today. Because the power of Jesus Christ that lives inside of them. Amen? So they come in crying, right? And some of them were about to lose their relationships with their wife. Giving them ultimatums. Some of them have to go to either prison or teen challenge. But you know what? They're God-ordered. Might have been court-ordered, might have been wife-ordered, might have been kid-ordered. But underneath all that, they were God-ordered. Amen? They were ordained before the foundations of the world. And so they come in ready to receive the Lord. And I'm telling you, once they start hearing how much the Lord loves them, and that they actually mean something, that they're not garbage, what they, they, they're useless, not going to amount to anything. They realize their worth in Christ, which was priceless, because Jesus shed his blood for these men. Jesus shed his blood for the world. And when they begin to understand their identity in Christ, they start to look a little better. They got a glimmer of hope in their eyes. You know, I can make it in this world. I don't have to live the same anymore. And so, I mean, Jesus changes just like that. We don't need to talk about past drug addictions or things we need to do to cope. Our coping mechanism is Jesus Christ. It's simple. It's simple. The simple gospel. We don't overcomplicate it. They just get Jesus. And he starts changing them from the inside out. That's why, look how, look how good these men look. I mean, shut up. But it's when I tell them, why do you look so good? Why do you think you guys look so good? It's because you guys look good on the inside. And it, can, it can't help but show itself outwardly eventually. So they look good on the outside because they look good on the inside. Amen? They're not whitewashed tombs. They're saved. They're sanctified. They're redeemed. They're chosen. So it's a difficult program, but they're making through it. It's not called Teen Easy like the director said. It's called Teen Challenge. Uh, they got something from morning to night. They got to sleep at a certain time. They got homework. They got different responsibilities. Some of them are on maintenance crews. Some are building TNT booths. Some are in the kitchen working day in and day out. And these men work hard. But it's a process. Recovery doesn't happen overnight. And that's why Teen Challenge is at least a year. And when you graduate, you have an opportunity to do an apprenticeship and then also do a Bible college portion. So we also have avenues for these men to go and pursue a life of ministry like I decided to. When I was broken, I needed help. And when I started listening to the Lord, I'm like, there's nothing I would rather do than do ministry. There's that option for these men. Some of them go back home to be productive husbands or fathers to their children. So it's, it's an amazing ministry. Amen. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing us to be a part of this body. Because I don't know if Teen Challenge has been here before. Praise the Lord. Can I give a hand for you guys? Amen. Thanks for inviting us. Thanks for believing in us. And there's obviously a reason, right? Lord, the Lord does not make any mistakes. Amen. And so... That's it. I'm done talking. <laughs> you guys want to hear from the men. But we're just going to sing some songs for you guys. We're going to give you guys some testimonies. And our goal is for you to be blessed. To see the goodness of God through a broken vessel. Amen. As we are broken vessels, but the Lord is shining through those cracks. And so when you see this, the light, it ain't us shining. It's Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ shining through us. Amen. And so our first song is a um, beautiful name. You can sing along with us. You can sit and receive however you want to worship.
said is Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Good, uh, good morning, guys, and uh, we'll start off with a word of prayer. And dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that we can praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the breath that you give us in our lungs, Lord, and if it's in your will, Lord, bless us with another day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So my name is John. I'm from Fresno, California, and uh, we start off by saying I was adopted at 30 days old by uh, what would have been my aunt, and uh I was a born I was born addicted to opiates, amphetamine, born with a shattered collarbone because uh I would have been abortion number twelve. My birth mom was gonna abort me and my aunt, her sister, begged her for me because she couldn't have kids, so I was her gift from God. And uh, you know, growing up, they always made sure we had a good childhood. You know, we traveled the bottom half of the United States, and uh, we were really happy. And uh, until the year 2010, uh, my mom uh, passed away from pneumonia. And uh, that's when my whole entire life started going downhill, you know. I started using drugs. I started hanging out with uh, wrong people. I got jumped into a gang, you know. I was doing everything that I could to feel that hate towards God and feel that emotion because I, I 
I did not like feeling that way, you know. My dad started drinking heavily, and, uh, you know, there's been times where we got in physical altercations because I was in my ways and he was in his ways, and, you know, I was going for about three or four years on a really bad road, really bad road. And uh, I've hurt people that I love, and uh, I hurt others just to get the next fix, just to get that extra feeling of not feeling emotions, you know. And, uh, you know, a year ago, I came into the doors of Teen Challenge. And uh, I want to say at first, oh, I did not want to. I did not want to go, you know. I didn't care about anything about God, you know. I worshiped the devil, you know. And uh, as of till now, it's the best decision I've ever made to go through those doors and actually stay. You know, the fellowship with my brothers right here, fellowship with Josh right here as an advisor, I wouldn't change for the world, you know. And uh, I graduated the program last May or of this year. And uh, <laughs> thank you. And I'm doing a four month apprenticeship. And I'm thinking about going to TCMI and continuing my walk in the Teen Challenge, hopefully get a job with them so I can minister to like kids on the street, you know, that are thinking they want to be in gangs or experimenting with drugs, I can minister to them and tell them I've been through that. God has delivered me from gangs, drugs, fornication, all that. God has delivered me from that and gave me a new life that I would never change for the world. And I, and I thank God for giving me that second chance. I thank God for keeping me alive. And also I, I thank my family for getting me here. And I thank you guys for your support. God bless all you, and I hope we see you again. Well, one good morning. And before I start, I want to say that anything that comes out of my testimony is all for the sake of the Lord, because I would not be standing here today if it weren't for him and that's just due to personal experiences. So hi, I'm Hudson. Um, I'm originally from Santa Clarita down by Magic Mountain. I'm 20 years old, and um, for me, everything starts when I was young. I'm adopted, so that kind of has its own little problems, but my birth mom tried to have me as an abortion at six months, and Due to the circumstances, thank the Lord, it didn't work, but she left me at the hospital, and so I got put into a foster home. And I got adopted by a wonderful family. My dad's a pastor, actually owns a church. I'd grown up in a really nice Christian home, but the thing that kind of started to make me think was what being adopted meant, what that meant or who my mom was or where I really belonged. And so that kind of, I already had a sense of not really knowing who I was. And so as I got older, due to me being born uh, premature, I was naturally skinnier than everybody, so I got picked on a lot. And people called me skeleton and things like that on a daily basis. And so that caused me to harden my mind and start to reject people, but I bottled it all up inside. And that, as we all know, it doesn't work very well. So growing up, I was raised in church, but over time, due to how I was treated and the expectations of being a pastor's son and how people perceived that I needed to act, I started to slowly start rejecting God. And around sixth grade for me when I was 12, I ended up straying into other religions that I don't recommend anybody straying into because at the end of the day, the Lord is the only person who is going to help you. And, but him knowing who I am and that I'm stubborn, he let me go through everything that I've been through because he knew it was going to help. So around the age of 13, I got led into drugs. Um, 
the people that I was around only used me for the things I had. I couldn't have said I've actually had real friendship or brothers until now. Um, and my family, obviously, but I kept wanting to find a sense of belonging in my friends because I didn't think that I could find it from anywhere else. And so that led me into a heavy drug addiction for from the age of 13 up until about a year ago. And not just that, but I actually went through Teen Challenge a long time ago. I went through the actual teen or adolescent home down in Orange County graduated, but I didn't soak in what I needed to get, and I didn't listen to the things that they were teaching me because I was just using it to be able to go back home and not be in trouble. And I ended up relapsing, um, falling back into my addiction, and that led to me getting incarcerated and also several overdoses. And this is why I thank the Lord today, because one of those overdoses, they pronounced me dead for about seven minutes, and they didn't give me anything. They didn't do anything to my body, but somehow seven minutes later I woke back up. And I give all glory to God for that because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be standing here. So due to that, I actually came into the doors of Teen Challenge August 31st of uh, last year. And it's been an amazing journey ever since because this time I feel like I have a relationship with the Lord for my own personal experience and due to my own personal faith. Not because my dad's a pastor, my family's this. No, this is my own personal relationship. And so it's been an amazing journey. I've had some ups and downs, as Josh knows, but at the end of the day, the Lord lets us go through that because he wants to shape us into who we're supposed to be. And it's... I wouldn't trade this for the world. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world, and I would not, you could offer me anything, and I would not trade this. So I'm, I have about a couple more months left. My plans are to do my apprenticeship and actually go to Teen Challenge Ministry Institute down in LA. And it's the Lord's will at the end of the day. It's not mine, it's his glory, it's not mine. And all glory goes to him, but the verse I stand on is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, and today I now know what that means. Thank you.
my name is Francisco Perez. Um, I'm from Salma, California. Uh, okay, so this is my story. When I was two days old, my mother threw me in the trash can. My grandfather and my grandmother made, made her tell, tell, tell them where I was. Ever since then, I lived with my grandma and grandpa. May they rest in peace. When I was 13, I moved out. I started running the streets. I went to boot camps, group homes. And um, when I was 18, I went to prison, in and out. <clears throat> until uh, when I was 27, I went to federal prison. I got out when I was 37. Um, I got out of federal prison. I was doing okay. I had a job. I was making money and uh, it was it was pretty good, but I started I started messing up again. Started with weed, hard liquor, and then came the meth. Uh, my life got out of control so fast within a month. I don't know what hit me. I don't know how, what happened. I hurt my family. I hurt my best friend. I hurt the woman that stayed by my side every day. My child, my grandkids. One day, me and my, the mother and my child were arguing and uh, things got out of control. The police were called and then my federal probation was called. He told me, Francisco, Monday you better be at Teen challenge or I'm gonna send you back to the penitentiary so I was there my best friend took me she's my best friend because she really is she has a heart of gold and I destroyed her and I hope one day she forgives me and um, I went to teen challenge and I opened my Bible and I gave my life to God like for reals <clears throat> yes, I have bad days like everybody else, but Jesus is what I rely on. Amen. This is what I do and what I read when I have bad days. We, we, my brothers talk to me. The advisors, they, they're, they're wonderful. Mr. Burns is wonderful. Um, it's kind of hard for me right now. Uh, so, Teen Challenge is, is a whole other opportunity to life, one I never knew of, the love I've never felt before. It's comfortable there because Jesus is there. We, we eat, sleep, like our advisor said, we eat, sleep, and eat Jesus all day long, like literally, <laughs> like from the time we wake up to the time we go to sleep. We even pray it out before we go to bed, so in my room, you know. Um, but I see a future now with Jesus in there. I see a future. I see a future because the Bible tells me so. Mm. You know, and with Jesus, I already won. Amen. You know, I, I, I lived a life. It was a process. This week it was taught, it was taught to me that life was a process. Mm -hmm. And God started me there. And now I'm here, and I got a long ways to go, but it's still, he can mold me into the man that he wants me to be, you know, so I can save kids like me that grew up the way I grew up. And um, I grew up with gangs and drugs and just a mess. But Teen Challenge teaches you that there's a better way, that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Only through Jesus can we get to the Father. Amen. And I want to go to the Father. Amen. You know, I want my children to go to the Father. And uh, my future, well, my future, I, I want to do ministry with kids. And uh, pretty much Teen Challenge is showing me the way, you know. And I appreciate that because Jesus is all over this place. If you guys have anybody that needs help. Please call Teen Challenge. If they can help me, they can help anybody. You know, my brothers are witness to this. 
Um, I have I have a request. I need prayer from everybody. I have a debt to pay. Tomorrow, 8 a.m., I have to turn myself in to the U.S. Marshals. And uh, I have to uh, I have to face my consequences because there is consequences to the things that people do. Because even though you know, uh, even though it gets hard sometimes, Jesus is there with us, and He's gonna walk into that federal building to me tomorrow. Amen. Usually, I would have started running by now, but I know God is with me. Amen. God is with me, Amen. and uh, I'm not gonna turn back. I'm scared, but I've been there already. I just never been with God there, you know. So, you know, it's gonna be a little better now. And um, Teen Challenge went up to bat for me. And uh, they're helping me. It's a blessing. Mr. Wilkerson, may he rest in peace. But this man was working for God. He could with, I mean, look at us like we're witnesses to this. He died for the revival. We all been through it. It's just amazing. I stand on Jeremiah 39. 18, because you trust in me, I will give you your life as a reward. I will rescue you and keep you safe. I, the Lord, have spoken. I believe those words because I trusted the Lord and he gave me my life back. He gave me my sobriety back and I will get my kids back. And hopefully people forgive me that I've hurt along the way. But I'm gonna show them that Jesus is really in my life so they can see that I'm not gonna go back to the person that I used to be. And um, I thank you guys for your time. God bless you guys. If you guys wanna pray with us, pray for Francisco. I love this man, I got to witness firsthand what the Lord is doing in his life. Um, amen, you guys already know the drill. So, dear Heavenly Father, God, we come as a body right now because we serve one God, one body, one Christ, and we come on behalf of our brother Francisco, God, because we know that it is the power of God to save. And we know that when Paul was worshiping in prison, that the prison gates were open, God. And that the prisoners were set free. And that's Francisco, even though there's a lot on his plate right now because he's turning himself in, God. He still came today to give you praise, God. Amen. Because he knows you're a good God. And so we're asking, God, that you would deliver him from the snare of the fowler, God. We pray that you would deliver him, God, from the hand of the enemy, God. I pray whatever happens, let your will be done in the courthouses. If he has to speak to some inmates, let him speak. Yes. But he's not speaking on his behalf anymore. He's going to speak on the power of the Holy Spirit and the testimony that he has now to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony, God. Yes. And I pray that you would strengthen him. You would cover him with your mighty angels, God, with your presence, God, as he goes to court. And let the judge see Jesus in this man. Yes. Let them see the change that is truly happening in Francisco, God. And may you give him grace and mercy just like you have given it to us all, God. Yes, I pray he comes back. That's our prayer. But like I said, let your will be done yes, at the end of the day, God. And I pray that he surrenders that to you, God. Yes, remove Father. any anxiousness. Remove any apprehension, God. And if, let him be filled with the with power, God, and with confidence, with confidence, because he is confident in you, God. And may he boast in his infirmities, because when he is weak, you are strong, God, for your grace is sufficient for him, God. So we love you, God, and we're asking for breakthrough in the name of Jesus. May he come back to Teen Challenge and finish the work that you started in him. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys.
morning, everyone. Um, I was just listening to the testimonies myself, and sometimes I need to be reminded, you know, these are all miracles behind me. Uh, God has really delivered us from a really destructive and dark lifestyle. And I'm one of the older guys at Teen Challenge, so, you know, I guess one thing I would like, the message I'd like to get across is that God never gives up. Amen. He will continue to pursue us, you know, throughout our life until, you know, we turn our lives to him and surrender in him. And that's kind of the point that I've come to in my life where I've tried everything. I went in several different directions, and I always end up in a place where I know that I need God in my life. And I thank God that today I have that desperation because that's what keeps me at the foot of the cross. Um, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to, to share my testimony, but more importantly than that, I want to thank God for giving me a testimony to share um, because I want him to be glorified. Sometimes it can be a little fearful being up here, you know, being transparent with people because, you know, uh, it's, for me, it's being vulnerable. And in the past, that vulnerability has been exploited and so, you know, I, I'm the type of person that always craves acceptance and approval from people. And I grew up that way. And so, you know, I carried those things into my life today. So it gets really hard for a person like me to open up and share a little bit of my life. But I realize in doing that, there's freedom for me. And also, it's to demonstrate the power of God at work in my life. And uh, so I'm thankful for that. I thank God that he didn't let me die in my sin. You know, I, I tell a little story about as a kid, I used to always like to take things apart. You know, I used to like to, whether it was a bicycle, whether it was an airplane, a model airplane that I fixed, I would tear them apart or take them apart. And sometimes I would take them apart to the point where I couldn't put them back together. Then I would have to call my dad. And my dad would come in and, you know, sometimes he'd be able to fix them and other times he wouldn't be able to fix them. Well, the reason I share that story is because that pattern, that behavior continued into my adult life where I would always tear things apart and it would be things that were supposed to be valuable and important to me like my family my job my freedom my dignity my self-respect and so we get to that point where I have to ask my father to step in and start repairing those areas of my life the Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians 13, 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So I'm in the process of, yeah, I'm an older guy, but I'm learning what it really means to be a man. And so that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, my name, first of all, is uh, Ralph. Uh, I grew up in a pretty stable home. I have uh, five siblings, one brother and four sisters. I grew up in a nurturing, protective, stable, secure environment. I had a mother and father that worked hard to provide a good living for us. Um, and over the course of that time, you know, I just remember it being the ideal home, you know, a beautiful family life. And then at the age of 10 years old, my father was a police officer. He worked for the state of California. And at 10 years old, I'll never forget that day when my father was late coming home. And we, we had an idea that something had happened. Well, little did I know, my father had passed away in the line of duty. Uh, he was a police officer. He would become one of California's next fallen heroes. Now, this was my life, and my life was suddenly ripped out from under me. You know, and that's the point where things really started to fall apart. You know, all of a sudden, my uh, two older siblings left home not long after that. Uh, my two younger sisters married at an early age, and um, they married men that were very abusive. You know, they were very um, verbally and physically abusive. They were drug addicts, and they drank heavily. And so that's the kind of lifestyle I was introduced to. And when they would beat up on my sisters, I would try to stop what they were doing, but I'm only 10 or 11 years old. And I would try to stop that, and twice I was actually beaten unconscious. And so I learned at an early age, okay, so this is what it means to be a man. And fortunately, that came to pass. It, it was no longer um, part of my life. I grew up, and at 19 years old, I, I was married. I had two children. 
and I tried to start rebuilding my life. I said, I will never let that happen to my family. So I tried to work hard. I went back to school and I uh, just wanted to provide a stable environment for my family. But unfortunately, the drinking was always a part of my life. No matter how much I try to separate it from my life, get out from under it, run away from it, it was always there. And so work, work, work became drinking, drinking, and more drinking. So things started to fall apart. I poured myself into education. I was fortunate enough, I went through a uh, Thornwell Divinity Bible College, then I ended up at Whitfield Theological Seminary. I withdrew from there, and years later I would go back to school at uh, Northern California Bible College in Pleasanton, California. I went to work for a very large church in San Jose called Cathedral of Faith under the pastoral leadership of uh, Pastor Kenny Foreman. And uh, it was great for a while, but once again, I still had that one, what you would call Achilles heel, it was the drinking. And I, I remember it was, you know, the Jack Daniels, you know, it was my tour guide through hell because that's what my life became, a living hell. So I ended up losing my position at the church, and the next thing you know, um, I ended up divorced and foreclosed on our home, filed bankruptcy. And I don't want to stop at the bankruptcy just being financial because it was an emotional and spiritual bankruptcy as well. I mean, I was a broken man, and I was hurting. But had I not descended, and the reason I share these depths of depravity with you is because I want you to see the height of God's love and mercy. God is so full of mercy. He doesn't frown on us. You know, he waits for us to come back to him. And so over a process of time of being beaten down and letting life crumble and fall apart around me, you know, I knew, knew that I needed God in my life. But unfortunately, uh, it, I went even further into this incomprehensible lifestyle. And I ended up uh, committing crimes. I ended up in prison. And uh, the second time I was in prison, it uh, would cost me um, 10 years and nine months of my life. I wouldn't see the free world for almost 11 years. I would watch my children grow up and have children of their own through pictures. Uh, I would see all of these events taking place around me. And it hurt, it hurt really bad. And during that period of time while I was in prison, my mom passed away, uh, wife was gone. But one of the most humiliating experiences for me was during that time of incarceration, I was in county jail fighting my case and open, the doors open and here comes walking in my son at 18 years old. And if that wasn't hard enough, they put him on the bunk right next to me. So every morning for about six months, I had to look at my son waking up next to me in a jail um, pod and jail environment and it hurt so bad you know people would come up to me and pat me on the back hey your son's here man right on and I looked like it was just so humiliating and embarrassing because I'm reminded of my failures as a father that was a breaking point in my life so we'll fast forward it I got out of prison and I like Jeremiah Chapter 1, verse 5, because the Lord has a plan. He says, before I formed you in the, your mother's womb, I knew you. And so I cling to the promises of God, and I realize that now, today in my life, I want to build the way Lord, the Lord wants me to build my life. I don't know what the future holds. Psalms 127.1 says, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. So I look back at my life, and I see a lot of that was in vain. It was vanity because it was always me at the center. You see, it was me so selfish and self-centered and self-seeking. You know, I didn't, want, I didn't think about anybody else. And that was just a selfish man. So I got out of prison. I started working odd jobs. I thought the drinking was no longer going to be part of my life. Unfortunately, it was. Fast forward to today. I made a decision that I needed something more. 
So I said, well, I'm not going to walk away for an entire year and commit myself to a program where I have to submit to men half my age. Uh, but I says, no, what you need, Ralph, is some humility in your life. So that's what I ended up coming there receiving was that humility that was needed and missing in my life. So here I am today at this place with an amazing staff of advisors, from the director to the assistant directors, advisors, apprentices, and students. We support each other. We help each other through the difficult times. You know, and all I can tell you is it's not easy. It's not easy at all. But I remind myself prison wasn't easy either, especially doing that without God in my life. Today I have God in my life. He's the foundation that I'm building my life on. I realize that God hasn't given up. The enemy whispers to me and say, Ralph, it's too late. You've missed the time of your visitation. God doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. I don't believe that lie anymore. So I'm thankful to be here. This is a great program. It's a Christian life school. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know God told me, I asked, what do you want me to do, Lord? The Lord says, just sit down, be quiet, listen, and obey. Don't try to pick locks, Ralph. I'll open that door when it's time. And so that's where I'm at today. I have several scriptures that I stand on, but I believe firmly that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe the good work he's begun in my life, he will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And uh, there's another verse that he gave me when I first entered the program. It comes from Micah chapter 7, verses 8 and 9. It says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and executes justice for me. Thank you. Thank you.
salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living hope. goodness don't we serve an amazing god amen to that guys i'm going to ask you to sing another song because we'd like to take up a free will offering that we can give to teen challenge to continue the ministry that goes on and what better way than to have these guys sing another song for us what do you think about that can you do that or repeat the same one ushers come on forward bring your bags up and Dig in, folks. Oh. 
Amen. I'm going to ask the elders to come up here, Doug, Paul, Mike, and, and, and the rest of the church. Please raise your hands. Joshua, come over here, please. You know, the, James tells us, you know, you bring everything to the elders of the church and we're to lay hands on and pray. Amen. And make sure they're anointed with the Holy Spirit. You know, as I was sitting here this morning, I was thinking, I counted heads. And there's 12 guys here. Hmm, what an amazing thing, right? <laughs> 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, right? And, you know, just as, as Jesus did in the Bible, we're told each man was called in a unique way yes. that ministered to that individual, right? And, and Jesus had a purpose for every single one that he calls, yeah. right? And that's the same for you and me and everyone else that calls upon his name. When he calls, he says, I stand at the door and knock. When you allow me to enter, I'll come in and I'll dine with you. Look at the meal he's had, huh? <laughs> Amen. So if you will, bow your heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for uh, the work that you've done in the lives of these men and the ones before them, and the ones that will come after. Father, we thank you for, for Joshua and the other leaders here of Teen Challenge. Continue to lead them, Father, in your way. Man has lots of fixes for lots of things that just end in failure, and we know it's only your way that is the right way to get things done. Father, we lift up Francisco to you tomorrow morning as he faces the U.S. Marshals, Lord. Give him the power of your Holy Spirit. Put your arms around him. Yes. Just wrap him tight and hold him up, Father, yes, because he is one of yours. And whatever you have in store for him, Father, just give him the peace of heart that he knows and understands that you're there with him. And these other men, as, as they face the challenges coming forward for them, do the same for them, Lord. Uh, you've allowed them to, to feel your presence so far, Lord. And, and Father, we just pray that uh, you continue to, to reveal yourself to them uh, and, and for them to allow themselves to be yours and to follow your direction. Father, thank you so much for the blessings of this morning. Uh, thank you for what you've shown us in your work at hand. We praise you. We love you. We thank you in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.